Humans are curious. Gazing into dark skies to inspect its shiny objects has been a fact of life for as long as human life existed. But what about those planets and galaxies? Does any life exist there? Is there anything out there on any planet, anywhere, staring in our direction and dreaming? Jews love questions, and this one was presented on several occasions to Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, known simply as the Rebbe, whose knowledge of both Torah and scientific sources was truly remarkable. The Rebbe insisted that Judaism does not rule out the chance that life may exist elsewhere, and that classic Jewish sources are divided as to whether such life actually exists. But when it comes to the purpose for which God created the cosmos, planet Earth is unique. Only its human inhabitants received a Torah from God, and only they have the capacity for free choice. So, is there life on Mars? Perhaps, but there are certainly no synagogues. In the early 1960s, a leading Jewish scientist, Professor Velvel Green, worked for NASA's Planetary Quarantine Division. He asked for the Rebbe's opinion on his exobiology program that was seeking signs of life on other planets. I said, you know, there are those, and I use the words, there are those of your followers who say that the Jews should not be working in the space biology program, the exobiology program, because it goes contrary to Torah. The Rebbe stopped one of those beautiful moments in time. He didn't smile, and he just thought. And then he came back with this, and he said as follows, exactly the way I'm doing it, he pointed at me. And he's saying this in Yiddish. You should look for life on Mars. I should keep looking, keep looking for life on Mars. And if you don't find it, keep looking elsewhere and elsewhere and keep looking. Because to sit here in this world and you say there is no life elsewhere is to put a limit around what God can do. And that nobody can do. Now the Rebbe didn't say there was life on Mars. The Rebbe just said that the job of a scientist who is trained in that profession is to keep looking for it. But not everyone received such a response from the Rebbe. In 1978, a similar question was posed by a young Jewish man living in Milan, Italy. He and his friends had been debating the question of extraterrestrial life, and they turned to the Rebbe to inquire about the Torah's perspective. The Rebbe wrote back, but his reply was as distant from his response to Professor Green as the Earth is from Mars. He advised the questioner that, although nothing in Judaism negates the possibility of extraterrestrial life, it was not advisable for him to be spending time investigating the question. Instead, he should focus on the terrestrial life surrounding him. I must admit that I answered your question without great enthusiasm. This is like a scenario in which we face a dangerously ill patient or a burning house. And instead of trying to save the patient or extinguish the fire, we deliberate profound theoretical questions about the cosmos. Such inquiries won't do a thing to help the patient or extinguish the fire. Similarly, today's Jewish youth are seeking direction. They are missing the path of Torah and its commandments, which is the path of true life. And this crisis is not happening somewhere in the heavens, amid the planets, nor in a remote corner of the earth, but rather in the immediate vicinity of you and your friends in Milan. And it is a matter of vital importance. God promises us that when we truly exert ourselves in this regard, we will succeed. Two different individuals, two very different responses. So, is there extraterrestrial life? Well, it seems that if you're a professional scientist with your head in space, advance science, discover more of God's wonders. But if you belong to the rest of humanity, seek life on Earth, work tirelessly to enhance it, and create wonders here for others. Thank you.